HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have a whole lot to catch you up on with Ashland Legion Baseball. We'll visit the Ashland Fire Department's camp bailout, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. A number of community members were at Faith Community Church Thursday morning as the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce presented founder of the Hopkinton Independent newspaper, Sarah Duckett, with their annual Distinguished Service Award. You know, it's hard to put in perspective what Sarah Duckett's meant to the community because uh, if you think about the kind of impact that the Hopkinton Independent has uh, on the politics and sort of community affairs, uh, it's, a pretty daunting, uh, it's a pretty daunting challenge to try to do that. You know, she, she's been immersed in the community. She's proven herself as a volunteer over the years, appropriations committee, very much involved in the library, and then starts the independent, which has made a, a major contribution to the town. That's why she deserves the recognition she received this morning. So pretty much every way that it would be possible to touch a town and have an influence in a town, Sarah has found a way to do, and it's kind of been drawn, I think, to do that, just because how much you care about the town. Many community leaders were happy to recall memories and recognize Sarah for all the hard work she has done to keep Hopkinton residents informed with what is happening in their town. Most people appreciate the impact of a local news of what the local newspaper has on a local economy. The fact that she sold rather than closed the newspaper was her way of keeping Hopkinton great. The Ashland Fire Department once again hosted Camp Bailout. The camp is for 14 to 19 year old girls interested in a career as a EMT or a firefighter. Here's a look. Camp Bailout once again took place at the Ashland Fire Station. The camp allows young women between the ages of 14 and 19 to get a taste of what it's like to work in the fire department. The camp can be physical, testing the abilities of the young ladies to perform the duties of a firefighter or EMS worker. Okay, rest your seat. Take over the thing. You guys with the, with the uh, victim, go ahead and get that fire out. <clears throat> Mag, watch out. So, Brittany, as soon as the, I need you to break it down because the next crew is going to start. The camp lasts five days and gave the participants numerous different experiences. Uh, did you enjoy Camp Bell Out? Yeah, it was super fun. What was your favorite activity? We had a police officer come and a military woman. It was awesome. I loved hearing both of their stories. Would you do the camp again? Of course. And um, who are some of your favorite instructors? I liked Sarah and Lynn and Bria. She wasn't here today. And Brittany. She was awesome. Right. My favorite. And Lori. They're all great. All right, terrific. And would you, how'd you like doing the obstacle course? They were tough, but they were fun. My team won, which is always great. <laughs> All right, are you thinking about a career in law enforcement or military or something like that? Yeah, thinking about a military career. On the final day of the camp, the ladies were put through a team building obstacle course to see how fast they can get through the various exercises. Good job. Oh, I believe you have to get through. Get 
The camp also featured guest speakers. I have been doing this in the military for 14 years now. I have deployed twice and I'm on my third deployment in January. When I am not in this uniform, I am in law enforcement. I'm a police officer out of Connecticut. I serve in the Rhode Island National Guard, but I live in Boston. So I cover three territories. Somebody says, no, you can't do this, or I don't want a female here. Okay, cool. Well, your mom, your mom put you me on this earth and I gotta tolerate you while I'm here and you're gonna tolerate me. So get along or get along, okay? That's the best advice I could ever tell anybody. Also on the final day, the ladies got to sit back with their families and reminisce on some of the great memories during their five days and they received the participation certificates. Well, the biggest thing is we try to instill confidence in the young ladies. Uh, I try to show them that um, there's, there's nothing that they can't do as a profession. Uh, I, I'm surrounded by professional women in the fire service and they see that they're, they're cap what they're capable of doing. But I also bring in uh, women in professions, other professions. Uh, we have uh, Stacy Kaiser, Officer Kaiser and Officer Anderson that came in this year from our own police department. Uh, and they were able to spend a couple of hours and, and talk to the, the young ladies about what, it like, what it's like to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we were lucky enough to have uh, a corporal from the Army come in and she talked to the girls about what it's like to be in the Army Reserves as a female. And uh, th so that's, that's a big part of it is basically exposing these young women to professional women, women of all different genres just so they can see that uh, no matter what it is they want to do, they can do it. Coming up next, the latest on Ashland Legion Baseball and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Ashland Legion Baseball has been doing a whole lot of winning. Here's a look at the latest. On Wednesday, July 10th, Post 77 was at Hudson. Line up and the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. And it looks like they have the run from first and a pickle. And the ball's thrown in to center field. And a run will score. one nothing. Post 77. Brandon Grover comes around to score on the errant throw. Down low, and here comes a run. 2 0 post 77. Stewart's looking at uh, the dugout. That usually is a sign to the coach that. Mm, I don't have it today. Nope. The ball's going to really have to go to the backstop for Rancatori to score. Chaves set to deal. 
Bunt pulled back, and the throw up to third is going to go into left field. Here comes Rankatori. He's going to come try to score, and the throw in is off the mark. It's 3 0 post 77. An Aaron throw from Gerard. He's having a tough time. He's got two in scoring position with one out for post 100. And this is up the left side, loved by the third baseman. He's going to chase down the runner heading home, and he, they got him in a pickle, and he's going to lay the tag. Did he get him? And, and now there's another runner in a pickle, the throw over to second, and the runner from third trying to score, and everyone's going to end up safe. And now there's an argument that one of the runners was out, and I think it was the runner that scored because he might have run out of the base path. So the runner that scored might have run out of the base path. The umpires are going to talk about it. The Hudson coaches arguing that he remained in the base path, and they're calling him safe, so it's a 3-1 to one game. And I think that call, and Jake Obed certainly not happy. Coach Obed out there arguing his case. It's going to be runners at second and third. A run is in. Wind up and the pitch. And this is going to take a very slow roll. Up the middle, grab by the shortstop, flip to second for one. Throw to first, not in time, and a run scores. Four to one, post 77. And Grover will get the RBI. And Calabrese forced out. Ben Fink comes around to score. Good on Javes set to deal. And this is hit in the air up the right side, and it is going to drop in for a hit. Here comes one run into score, a second run being waved around. Balowitz is going to score, and it's going to be a two RBI triple for Cole Glassburn. A six to one lead for post 77. It varies. Usually you get five boxes. This is hit in the air over to left center. That'll drop in for a hit. Here comes one run to score. And the lead runner behind him is going to be stopped at third. It's a six to two ball game. An RBI double for Tyler Ogerholm. Here's the one out. And this is going to take a couple hops up the middle and get through into left field. And another run is around to score. An RBI single for Gerard. It's a 6-3 to three game. 1-0. And this is up the left side. Glove by the third baseman. Fink to throw home. They got the runner in a pickle. Back to Fink. And now Kavanaugh covering home. They get the tag on the runner heading home. Now the throw to third. And it's a double play. Unbelievable. What a way to get out of this inning. Hudson with an opportunity to do a whole lot more damage. And they get the double play of a lifetime. And that'll be an interesting one to score for sure. Well, I mean, it was a perfectly executed rundown by Fink. I mean, I mean he faked out the run or something, but that was the play to make. Lennox set to deal. And this is hit in the air over to center field, and that is going to drop in front of the fence. Here comes Grover around to score. It's an RBI double for Dom Cavanaugh. Seven to three, post 77. Usually let the catcher run out as far as. There it is. And he gets a piece of this one into left field. It goes. Here comes another run around to score. The throw is cut off. And post 77 has played it at another run. It's eight to three as Dom Cavanaugh comes around to score on the RBI single by Sean Jewett. Crash his high school coach because he already graduated. Balowitz is going to send this one up the right side. It's bobbled by the second baseman in the right field. It goes. Here comes the lead runner and yet another post 77 run will score. Drew Rankatori comes around to make it a nine to three game. Jewett up to third. And Balowitz reaches on the second error of the inning for post 100. There's ball four, and another run will come around to score. It's a 10 to three game. And this is going to be hit up the middle. It takes an awkward roll. Everyone's safe. A run will score. Still only one out here in the sixth. 
as this is hit in the air over to left field. Nope. And that is going to drop in for a hit. One run is in to score, and it's a 12-3 game. An RBI single for Calabrese, and post-77 on a roll. That'll bring... And this is hit high in the air over to center field, and it is caught. Runner from third going to tag. The throw in is a good one, but it's off the mark, and another run scores. It's a 13-3 ball game. So Brendan Grover with the RBI sacrifice fly out. And Kavanaugh gets a piece of this one over to left field. And that is going to drop just in front of the fence. One run is in. Here comes another run trying to score, and he will. And that is going to be a two RBI double for Dom Kavanaugh. And this is hit in the air over to left field. And see, did that go out? No, it dropped just in front of the fence. A run is going to come in to score. Lawrence Tang has his first hit as a member of post 77. That's going to, oh, the umpire is chewing both dugouts out. I don't know what was said. Did you hear what was said? And this is hit in the air over to right field, and it is going to drop foul. Oh, if he took second base right there, fair. that would have been no, ugly. No, that was fair. Fair Excuse ball. Me. Fair ball. All right. It's out of my sight line, but it is indeed a fair ball, so a single for Jewett. Ashland had an 11-run six inning and pulled out the 17-3 Mercy win. Some of the Hudson players weren't too happy after the game. Post 77 improved to 11 and 0 on the season. On Thursday, July 11th, Post 77 took on Lowell. Despite the game being at Ashland Middle School, Post 77 was the away team due to a field conflict in Lowell. Post 77 was trailing 5 to 2 until the top of the fifth inning. Ashland, patient. And he will hit this one in the air in front of the third baseman. Throw to first is going to get away from the first baseman. One run already in. Here comes Kavanaugh. He'll score as well. And it's a five to four ball game. Gonna wipe the blood off that ball. Right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So it was a smash. Glassburn reaches on the errant throw. Hornung scores. Kavanaugh scores. Post 77 in business. Lowell added a run in the bottom of the sixth, and it was a 6-4 to four Lowell lead with Ashland down to their final three outs in the top of the seventh. Base hit here. I believe Chris Ward actually worked in the first time these two teams met. This is ripped up the right side. That'll get through. Here comes Balowitz around to score, and the lead runner behind him is held up. And now they're going to send him as the ball got away. Kavanaugh trying to score, and the game is tied. 6-6. Six to six. Drew Brancatori comes up in the clutch of President Day. And this is up the right side. That's going to get through. Here comes Jewett around to score. Post 77 has taken the lead. Seven to six, an RBI single for Cole Glassburn. The Lowell coach is going to be saying to himself, why did I yank my pitcher? Glassburn deals, runner taking off from first. to throw up by Jewett, over to second, and they got him! Game over! John Jewett ends it with a brilliant throw to second base. And John Mercury caught stealing, and Post 77 walks away with the 7-6 victory over Lowell. Post 77 hangs on and takes the 7-6 victory. Ashland Legion is now 12-0 on this season. Tom Nappy here with Cole Glassburn. Cole... A great come from behind win tonight, and you did it all out there. You came in in relief early on in the game. You pitched great against a very good low lineup, and you had a couple of big hits as well. Uh, how does it feel to have this come from behind win tonight? Uh, it feels good. Uh, my de my teammates definitely helped me out. Uh, they did a lot to start that last inning where we scored uh, our runs to get us back in the lead, and uh, I'm appreciative that they put me in a spot to win the game. So. And 12-0 and now on the season. How does it feel to be undefeated so late in the season? And did you ever think that you guys would be at this point? 
Uh, I knew we had a really talented team coming in, and uh, it, it feels really good. I mean, we're not as focused on that. We're more focused on uh, just keep winning, clinch a one seed for the playoffs, and then uh, keep going from there. So, and From what I understand, you got the Gandhi Trophy tonight. How does it feel to be able to take home the Gandhi Trophy for the night? Uh, I won't be taking it home because I'm not going to be here next game because I'm going to Washington, D.C. for the weekend. But, uh, I mean, it, it feels good. My teammates put me in a position to, to win that, so I'm um, – and lastly, what's it been like to play with this group of guys? Uh, it's a really tight knit group of guys, and uh, we we all love each other. So, and we we've been playing really hard this whole time, and uh, we've just kept succeeding. So, I mean, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's a really good atmosphere out here. So, yeah, it's enjoyable. All right, Cole. Congratulations on a great performance tonight and a great team win. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Yep. Thank we're the you. away team tonight because uh, we swapped home games last time. They couldn't get a field, so they traveled to us twice. Um, we got on them early, and that was really our goal. I wanted us to go. I wanted us to get runs. I didn't want them to feel comfortable here, even though they were home. Um, and we did that, but then the bats went quiet. Had a lot of hits, got on base, but didn't have the timely hit to get runs in. Eventually, in fourth or fifth, we were able to get a little bleeder and get some luck on that throw to first, get two runs in. Um, but we knew. I mean, even in the dugout, they scored that run in the bottom of the six, and we are like, all right, we got our two, three, four. Kevin gets on, you know, that's huge. And, I mean, a lot of props to Kevin. I mean, sophomore, really just started playing, just started making his way in the lineup, and he's really been producing. Leads us off with a double there that got the energy going. Jackson picks us up all the time, stings the ball. Even when he gets it out, it's always productive. Um, then, it just, then it just kept carrying over. Um, and Drew, two, two, two more shout-outs I'm going to give. Drew, I mean, hasn't been swinging it well lately. He's been a little cold. He's been battling a hamstring injury. Um, came off a great season for Hopkinton, but been a bit of a slump. And we talked pregame. I was like, hey, listen. I was like, when you're behind in the count, like, or, or you're ahead in the count, I was like, be confident. Like, you don't need to be overly patient. Be confident. Like, I know what you can do, and he does too. Um, and so we gave him the call there. We re-entered him, and he gets up 2-0. And it's like, we sort of looked at each other, and I was like, hey, this is what we talked about. He got his pitch, and he ripped it. He made the most of it. That was the biggest hit we've had all season. And then Cole, I mean, can't say enough about him today. Gets that winning single, obviously, but in relief, five and a third, I think it was. Yeah. Five and a third, shuts them down, one run, like, phenomenal. His improvement in the past year is incredible. Two, two great kids, really. Standing by with the latest upcoming programming, on the HCAM channels is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, July 22nd at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, July 23rd at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Conservation Commission meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, July 25th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Community Summer Band performs in the latest edition of the Concert on the Common. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. North Chelmsford game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon.
A large attendance was on hand for the annual Sharon Timlin race to fight ALS. The event took place at the Hopkinton High School fields. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene. We've never done this before, <laughs> but we're going to try our best. First time. Welcome, everyone, to the 16th annual Sharon Tilly Memorial Event. My name is Abby Rosenberg. This is April Gallagher and Dave Kruger somewhere. <laughs> directors for the event. We welcome you and thank each and every one of you for being here today. We are so grateful and inspired by seeing everyone here. We have all come together to make a difference and we have by raising two million dollars to help cure ALS. <laughs> Dr. Brown and his amazing team at UMass Medical School are making tremendous progress towards a cure, and we are grateful for the work that you are all doing. A very special welcome to the entire family, Tim Lynn family, and to Tim Bakefield. Thank you for your ongoing dedication and support. Thank you to every volunteer here, every runner, every sponsor, every fundraiser, and especially to the amazing committee that pulls this thing off year after year. Have a great run, or walk, or crawl, or whatever you're gonna do. Please take a minute to check 